Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to be bringing you 10 books on my radar that have queer representation and are by queer authors. So it is Pride Month and that's something that I've never particularly engaged with on this channel and in the light of um, the various discussions that are happening about race at the moment it's made me have a look at my bookshelves and kind of see other areas where I am lacking diversity and lacking different people's experiences and the, uh, the queer voice is one that is definitely missing from a lot of my reading. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that I'm going to be planning to read over the course of the rest of 2020, um, all of which have queer representation in some way, shape or form. In typical my channel fashion we have a bizarre blend of genres and styles and fiction and non-fiction because you wouldn't expect anything less from me on this one and irritatingly um, most of them haven't arrived in the post yet so uh, future Emma is going to have a nightmare editing all the covers in so ha sucks to be you. Uh, right let's jump in. The first one is a non-fiction which is When Brooklyn Was Queer by Hugh Ryan. This is fairly self-explanatory in the title. It is a history of Brooklyn and its connections with the queer community. This was actually on the super super long list for the BookTube prize. I don't believe it actually made its way onto the official long list for any of the judges to read but when I saw it on that list it was one that I thought looked really interesting and so now I'm going to prioritise picking it up and getting round to it. The next one is again a another non-fiction and this is uh, All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Sorry I have the list of authors over there because I can't remember all of them and I don't have the books physically to hand. This is a collection of personal essays from George M. Johnson and it is currently doing rounds at the moment. It is being talked about by a lot of booktubers so it's one that I would really like to read and see what the hype is about. Um, I don't generally vibe with essay collections. They're one that I um, find a little bit too broken up, almost like short story collections. So I'll be interested to see if this can kind of change my mind about the essay collection style format um, because it's one I'm a little bit skeptical about. The next one is Fresh Water by Akwekwe Emezi. This is a magical realism, slightly sort of genre uh, defying book that is about a young Nigerian woman who has um, gods inside her, I believe, and they almost kind of create like fractured personalities for her. And then something happens that forces the gods to kind of take physical manifestation, I believe. Um, I've heard a few different people talk about this book and it seems like it's one that is quite hard to explain exactly what the plot is like, especially if you haven't actually read it yet. So I'm really intrigued by this because I think it's gonna be a really fun, funky weird blend of a lot of different things going on and I really enjoy um, weird magical realism especially ones that talk about personhood and like identity and all that kind of side of things so I think this is going to be really cool and weird as a read so psyched about that. Then we move on to some just very classic history non-fiction for me and I would like to read Charity and Sylvia A Same-Sex Marriage in Early America by Rachel Hope Cleaves uh, again sorry looking over there um, this is basically just looking at the history of same-sex marriage within America and is something that I think is gonna be really interesting. The cover is also beautiful so I'm very excited about this one. The specific focus of this book is basically looking at the fact that same-sex marriage is often considered something that is fairly new and innovative of our particular sort of modern era but actually there's evidence of it going back quite far and this is looking at a particular case of that in the 1700s I believe which is really exciting. On the note of history uh, I would also like to read a book about Gentleman Jack who is the other persona of Anne Lister who was was a lesbian who was in the Victorian era I believe but please don't quote me on that I could be wrong there. Um, this was made into a, like there was a BBC miniseries about her life which was very popular which I've not watched because I don't seem to watch anything on TV anymore these days. Um, there are many different books out there about her. The one that is particularly on my radar is by Angela Steedle which was translated by Katie Derbyshire. My laptop's too far away and I keep having to do this. Um, but having said that there are quite a few out there so um, if this one doesn't particularly resonate with you there's quite a few if you are interested in seeing some others. She was also a really big diarist which I think is going to be very interesting because I don't tend to read many diaries but it means I should probably let my mate Helen know about this because she absolutely loves reading diaries. It's her favourite form of non-fiction. One that I am like super excited excited about, I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating as a read, is Art on Fire by Hilary Sloyne. This is a fiction book but what it is is it's a fictional biography of a lesbian artist combined with uh, like essays and fake journalism articles critiquing her artwork and it's such a convincing piece of fictional non-fiction that it actually got nominated and potentially even won a couple of non-fiction awards when it was first released. This sounds so cool and like so fun as a as a weird way of kind of blending two different genres and I was just saying recently in a couple of videos back that 
I wanted to read more non fic wanted to read more fiction about art as well as non-fiction and I think this is gonna be a really fun example of the two blending. So yeah, that one looks very cool. As soon as it arrives, I'm definitely picking it up. Another one I'd like to get to is Queer Intentions, a personal journey through the LBT LBGTQ plus uh, culture. This is um, by Amelia Abraham. Yes, that's what that says. Sorry again. Uh, and this one is looking at kind of a history of queer culture, but also um, Amelia's personal interactions with it. So I think this is going to be quite interesting. It was recommended um, on a couple of different people's uh, kind of queer lit um, TBRs and readathons and things like that. So I'm quite excited for this one. It's more sort of a general history rather than looking at specific areas. <laughs> the only one that I actually have a physical copy to hand up right now is the Lion Tamer Who Lost by Louise Beach. This has been on my shelf for a little bit, a little while, and it's um, a gay romance but also slight thriller esque. And apparently, it's a devastatingly beautiful love story with a tragic heart. Um, it's about two guys a, one who makes a childhood wish, and then uh, which he then wishes doesn't come true. I'm not too sure what's going on there. And then Ben, who uh, wants to become a lion tamer in um, on a lion reserve in Africa. I honestly don't know where this is going to go or what this is going to be like. I started it on audiobook a while ago but I couldn't find a speed for the narrator that I liked. It was either too fast or had loads of like weird pauses in it so I'm excited about actually picking this one up because I think I bought it on a bit of a whim because it was a three for two in like Heifers or Blackwells or wherever so I'm excited to see what this sort of slightly darker romance uh, has in store. On the note of romance I also would like to get to Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is um, the classic fake dating trope and looks really good fun. I've been reading a few fake dating tropes recently because um, like some of you will probably know already I've been reading a lot more contemporary romance recently and honestly the fake dating trope is one that I love in fan fiction but I've yet to find a contemporary romance that I think does it well enough. I think that they kind of end up getting um, they, they just haven't quite hit the spot yet for me so I'm excited about having another example out there of a fake dating trope that I'll, I'll see whether this one resonates a bit more. The last one is The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz. This is some kind of freaky cool time travel-esque thing going on. Um, it is about a young woman who goes back in time to try and change stuff to try and basically make things better for um, underrepresented people going forward and to kind of fix some of sort of history's atrocities but she can't seem to make it stick and then there's some sort of um, organisation who are trying to stop her and on top of that there's also a queer love story, um, a lesbian love story I believe going on as well. I'm not too sure what this is going to be like, this sounds like it's going to be really good fun and sort of that funky um, sci-fi that does a lot of world building but isn't bothered about making sure you're keeping track and I'm kind of getting like this is how you lose the time war kind of vibe from it so I'm really excited about this one in general I think it's gonna be really entertaining and I've been on such a sci-fi kick recently so this is gonna be excellent you guys haven't seen my sci-fi kick yet but it is coming <laughs> Um, so that is it from me for uh, books for this. I will link down below my TBR for black authors that I want to try and get to and this is just kind of a, a mark of intention to try and fix some um, issues for diversity on my bookshelves going forward. So do let me know what you think to any of these books, where should I start, which ones are you excited about etc etc. Um, if you have any other recommendations, especially like I said I really am keen for weird freaky sci-fi that does terror like does cool world building but doesn't really explain the world building to you and lets you just get on with trying to learn about it. So if you have anything for that, do comment down below. Um, so yeah, so that's it from me. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!